Hearing is an action. Listening is a process. For the past 22 years, I've been very fortunate to travel throughout the country and around the world and work with executives, doing executive coaching, and working with leadership teams who want to become high-performing leadership teams. What I realized after working with one of the premier strategic consulting companies was that when organizations did not implement the strategy, it wasn't because it wasn't a, a, a good strategy. What I realized is that it was the cost of making the strategy work. The teams would break down. And I always wondered why was that? Why did that happen? And so as I had an opportunity to go different parts of the world, I saw the same thing. And as I looked at these issues, I said, why is that? Why is it that people are having trouble communicating, not just what the strategy was, but communicating within the team, or the executives communicating to the people on the team, and then definitely to the broader organization. So that's what got me interested in not about what people are talking about, but why is it that people are not listening? So hearing is an action. Listening is a process. So the other day, I'm driving down the interstate 400, where it merges onto 85. And I'm talking to myself and I'm asking for some confirmation about this whole listening process. So, traffic was moving along pretty fast, about 25 miles an hour. <laughs> I look to my right and there's a billboard. And I literally slam my brakes. The billboard said, ears can be eye opening. And I thought, that's my confirmation. Ears can be eye opening. So I want to talk with you a little bit about this process that we call, I've said, is what's hearing and what's listening. I'm going to talk about the listening process because hearing is the sound. Hearing sounds or the absence of sound is also hearing. But what is listening? Everybody wants to tell you how to listen. Lean in. Do this. Do that. That's not what listening is. That's the appearance of listening. Listening is a process that starts before a sound is made. Why is that? It is because the basis of our listening is the beliefs we already have before anyone ever says anything. Those beliefs are seeking confirmation of what you already believe. They don't want to hear an anomaly. They don't want to hear something that challenges the belief. They want confirmation of that belief. So hold that thought for a minute, because that's where it starts. So once you then have this encounter where you are listening to someone or someone enters a room and you see them before they even start speaking, you're already listening. And once they start speaking, you're going to start selecting the data that you want to focus on. But remember, things you're selecting are to confirm that which you already believe. So you don't have an open mind. You already start listening with a closed mind. But once you select that data, you're going to bring in all the things that you've ever experienced in your life that are relative to what you're experiencing now as you're in this listening process. So I'm going to interrupt that process for one second to say to you, this is why two people can go to the same meeting and have a different experience. It's because the experiences that you bring in are those experiences from your lifetime. For the younger person, may not be as many, but it's still their experiences. For the older person, quite a few experiences that they can bring to the table. So already you are listening very differently. Now, once you bring those experiences to the table, you're going to start adding meaning to what you're hearing by what the person is saying. So you're already at very two distinct places. I'm hearing one thing, you're hearing something else. Because my experience is this, your experience is something else. So you have, you're going to arrive at different conclusions or beliefs. And then remember, when you get to those beliefs, what are you looking for? Confirmation again. That's the listening process. And guess what? It happens so quickly. Almost nanosecond. That happens. Because if it doesn't happen, 
then there's a breakdown in your personal sanity. So this is something that you can't control. It happens, but what you can do is interrupt it. So the ability to listen effectively means that you learn to challenge your own thinking, but it's all done within your head. It's all up here, and it's done quickly. So what I've shared with you is a listening process. I call it MRS. It's multifunctional. It's what you see. It's what you hear. It's what you're thinking. The, uh, the R is done very rapidly. And then the S is, it's done silently. So all of this is being done within the confines of your own head, mind, before you ever speak. So that's listening. So if that's listening and you want to do it effectively, I said you have to challenge your own thinking. So how do you go about doing that? You challenge your own thinking by saying, what if it's not what I'm thinking? What if she's not going to say at the end what I'm thinking she would say? What if her conclusion is different? Or if it is different because she stated it up front, then instead of in your own mind forming your rebuttal, you would say, what is the data, what is she seeing that would lead her to believe that that's the right conclusion? So in challenging your thinking, what you start doing is not necessarily putting yourself in that other person's shoes. That's what we generally talk about is listening. But trying to understand their logic and how they arrive at what they're thinking. Now, a lot of people want to use the discourse in today's political environment or whatever as saying, here's why we should listen effectively. No, there's been discourse in our families, in our relationships, in our businesses, in our communities, long before there was political discourse. These are things that we need to know and understand how to do regardless of what the situation is. I have found that effective listening is the most powerful yet rare skill, not only in business, but in communities, in nonprofits, in homes, and in relationships. I think I've covered the basis for all the things that we do in life. The other thing that I came across, and this study was just released last week in the uh, Journal of Internal Medicine, and what it said was that when people go to the doctor, to the general practitioner, the visit is normally about 30 minutes long. In this 30-minute visit, there's a period of time where the doctor says, what brings you here today? Or how are you doing today? So I polled people and said, how long do you think you get to answer that question? You got a 30-minute doctor's visit. The doctor poses the question, what brings you here today? You start talking. Your doctor does effective listening. And in how many minutes or seconds does the doctor allow you to speak? A 30-minute visit. Doctors on average from this study, 67% of general practitioners allow people 11 seconds to tell them why they were there before they interrupt it. Before they interrupt it, 11 seconds as to why we're here today. So I'm going to use the medical profession as our poster child for what's not effective listening. If you're going to interrupt within 11 seconds, that's not effective listening. So, let's assume you want to listen effectively. What are three things that you can do? And I'm going to give you these three things, and if you just practice one of them, you're going to be a much better listener. But if you do all three, you're going to be pretty good. The first thing is, you have to be all in. Listening is a very, very engaging process. That's number one. Number two, you have to quiet the voices in your head, and you have to embrace silence. Silence from the time the person stops speaking until the time you start speaking. You have to process what they've said, not as they're talking, but between the silence. You process and then you speak. And the third thing is you have to make your listening visible by sharing with them, here's what I heard, here's what it said to me, here's what it means to me, and here's what I concluded to make your thinking visible. If you do those three things, then I say to you, 
Go, listen, and hear new things. Thank you very much.